Get in line if you're gonna ask him to take off his shirt. Come on. <laughs> and our guest, he's on the flip side of things, of course. You've seen him at Midnight in Paris. <laughs> Maybe you've watched AMC's The Night Manager. <laughs> the god of mischief, his brother is on screen. You know who's lucky, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Tom Hiddleston! You guys both all over uh, the internet right now. Uh, we'll start with you, Chris, where you're uh, once again melting hearts with that Instagram post just a couple days ago that your wife took you on an airplane asleep, holding your children asleep with a bag of chips right there. Was, uh, that, that's good parenting. That's how you put them to sleep, a bag of chips. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's true. At the same time, though, you make all of us guys look bad because that is just... It's hard to compete with that. There was just so much adorableness in that picture. Oh, thank you. I, I mean, we had a, a big holiday traveling around Australia, and my kids were uh, as exhausted as anyone, so I think it wasn't my parents here. It was, it was a lack of energy that they had. But you were pretty exhausted too, yourself. Uh, I've come, yeah, all the way from Australia, and, and I stopped in LA for a month now. Yeah, here, but um, no, it's great, you know, we'd have all the fans and you know, the people who keep us employed and, and all the rest of the love and appreciation is just awesome, so thank you, everybody. And thank you for taking time on your busy schedules for to, to be here, I know Philadelphia appreciates it. And of course, Mr. Hiddleston, you are in the rumor mill right now. I'm just reading today, within the next few days, they're going to announce what you could just go ahead and announce right now, that you're the next 007. I don't think that announcement is coming. Oh. Um, but I'm very gratified to hear the enthusiasm. Um, yeah, uh, there's not much I can say that, that I haven't already said, but, but it's, it's, um, I, I know Excuse your me, guess is as good as mine, more? to be honest. So maybe you can confirm the title of the next one 007 Ragnarok. <laughs> Well, it's going to be a very large ensemble, the clash of the two. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be great. Well, continued luck, potentially, if that does or doesn't happen. If not, I, I think we'll be okay if you stick around the Marvel Universe for a while. Woo! Yeah. Uh, I suppose we should say that you probably can't give us too much info about Thor Ragnarok. Uh, so, to shoot down a lot of these questions, what can you say? Like, why should we be excited for the upcoming movie? We have Thor and Loki. Uh, man, it, it is a, a lot of fun. I think um, it totally is the, you know, a big shift in a great way than anything we've seen before. Um, Taika, which is the director, if you know any of his work, is um, yeah, it's just incredible sort of comedic talent, um, a lot of heart in everything he does. Um, but, you, you know, there, there's a, it, it's a very different Thor, it's a different Loki. I think there's, uh, we go off into a whole other uh, world that we haven't experienced before. Um, it, it's, it's fun, you know? Uh, but that's me skirting around the issue because I can't say too much. Can't say too much, absolutely. All right, well, uh, let's go to some fan Q&A here. We'll start with this side. And uh, young lady, what's your question? Um, hi, I'm Jasmine. My question is actually just for Tom. Sorry, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> my, my throat hurts, so go ahead. <laughs> A Shakespeare Company in Delaware, so I'm a huge fan of a lot of your stage work, and I was wondering if you could only play ever for the rest of your life one character from one of Shakespeare's plays, who would it be and why? <laughs> These are big questions uh, for a Saturday afternoon. Um, um, uh, <laughs> I mean, they're all great. 
I don't know. If I think one, if you could play one, Chris, which should you play? Four? Probably four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Most favourite um, love Shakespeare in place. <laughs> it is an underrated Shakespeare play. The tragedy of Thor, Prince of Asgard. <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't mind just having one day myself, actually. Um, um, probably, I would love to play... Um, oh, God. <laughs> Whatever I say, you're going to hold me to. Um, I don't know. I, I, there are some great ones. I'm going to give you three, which isn't loud, but I don't like to you there. Julia. Julia, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I believe in my Romeo. Sure. Yeah. And in that moment, we created a monster. Yeah, I see. Probably, uh... I'm love up on this stage. <laughs> for you too. Ben, ben Lick and Much Ado, thank you for the shout out. Uh, so Ben Lick and Much Ado, um, when I'm all in grey, if I make it that far, King Lear. Um, and... And maybe the Danish Prince, if I have to never see. Be great as, as any of them. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Winter Soldier. <laughs> um, since this panel is called Brotherly Love, do you consider yourself your brothers or do you have any brotherly stories to tell? Well, I was made an honorary Hemsworth a couple of years ago. <laughs> which is, um, it was a big day for me. You know, it's, a, it's a huge moment. It's like, it was like Mowgli being accepted by the wolves. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, I never have any brothers, so to have an on-screen brother is, is uh, a lovely thing. Aww. Brotherly love. <laughs> My brother from another mother. Yeah, Anthony Hopkins to come and do it for a day. Yeah, Anthony Hopkins has been flipped. 
yeah, no, he, that's uh, that's the, that's his sort of mastery of, of illusions, I think. Um, and what's exciting about Ragnarok is that it kind of there's some questions that we need answering. Um, yeah. Maybe you'll we'll find out. <laughs> Thank you. But we all know that this is a cute, cute guy. But we don't know that you're a fantastic person. You know, you know this means that I think they're very And then, when it comes to life management, and your future brother is James Bond, do you think you can see yourself dancing to save the woman, to do the heroic the things? Wait. Dude, can I just. What? What are you doing? They call me the as 007 for the first time. And that way, definitely. So that question is for Chris, right? Yeah. I, think I think you should, yeah. Thank you, David. Hi, 
Hi, uh, I'm so nervous here. It's so amazing to see you guys here. Um, my question is, we all know that you, uh, both of you have played a lot of great characters other than Sora and Loki. Uh, if you have a chance to, like each of you, choose one of your former characters and to make, make them meet, to make them meet with each other's character, uh, which two would you like to pick and let them meet? Uh, <laughs> I'd probably choose um, James Hunt from Rush. That was, uh, probably just a character enough to play and love the film. Uh, but as far as would you get along with whoever you choose, I don't know. Brandon Page! Oakley. 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 But quite interesting, like, it would be quite interesting to have like a meet up between Jonathan Pine and James Hunt, wouldn't it? Jonathan, I'm on the top. It takes a long time to get there because the, the seas are rough and the boats are rough. It's only a question I can make excuses. I've got three kids, I don't know what. Anyway. Um, uh, or they could be like. Um, oh, what do you think? What's like, the, yeah. the most interesting SmackDown? <laughs> How about. Um,
Kaos kunci. Well, I think Thor and Sif always had a thing with one of the comics, didn't they? So yeah. they maybe have a thing in this game. <laughs> not the Warriors. Hey, what's it called? The Warriors. She is the... Oh, well. I call the Warriors Four, so she is it. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I haven't played this game, so I'm confused. Uh, next question. <laughs> It's going to take too long. We'll do this later. <laughs> you try. You can try. Yeah. Hi guys, uh, thank you for being here. Um, so we just had Captain America Civil War, which was incredible, and the Avengers had a fit of family tip, mildly. Um, and the status quo has changed dramatically while Thor has been gone. So I was just wondering how you were thinking about how you would respond to that when he comes back. What do you think about what happened between Steve and Tony? What is your response will be when he comes back? I think he's just really upset he wasn't involved, right? <laughs> you know, be like, sort it out, idiots. This is silly. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. I, I don't know how, how, where that's going to, you know, the story's going to go when Thor does come back. Um, but I think it comes quite a shock that they're not all getting along and having a bit of a tiff. But, uh, you know, we'll see what kind of larger element you know, is, is that larger than their individual disputes and they need to come together and sort it out, who knows, I don't know. Um, I just don't know any of the, how the, you know, you know, that far ahead of the films when they were even written yet. So like, when I came down to Earth and brought you guys together, <laughs> and I left and we were fighting each other. Sorry. <laughs> so sorry. He's going to come back and leave them all. But... <laughs> I like this idea. Me too, thank you. <laughs> talk about uh, internet uh, rumors and speculation. Can you just go out on Civil War? Can we talk about that Chris Evans does a bicep curl with a helicopter? <laughs> and it's just getting better. Yeah, I'm seriously. I was like, if you don't love that, you're not your friends. <laughs> I was going to ask how Chris was going to top that in the next Thor movie. Bicep curl the whole thing, baby. Yes, sir, the young one. Young one. Yeah. Um, if you could take if you could take the staff and the hammer home, would you and why? <laughs> Household maintenance, chores. <laughs> uh, bit of repair work. Uh, I think really I need I need a broom for the kitchen. So I just put stick a little broom on it and you know. Close in the dark. You can do you can do your housekeeping at night. <laughs> Do your chores, kid. <laughs> Thank you for that question. Um, hi. Um, I want to thank Tom for bringing up Kevin and Ghostbusters because this is a question for Chris about Ghostbusters. Um, because you're here and you're talking about Thor and you're well known as like the big family man, he's a huge hero. And, you know, he's larger than life, he's a god. And then now you're playing Kevin. In Ghostbusters, he's the Janine. And first of all, I am super excited for this movie. But can you just talk a little bit about the difference between playing Thor and playing Kevin? <laughs> yeah, a lot of, a lot of differences. Um, didn't have to go to the gym, which was nice. We like that you go to the gym. <laughs> we love that you go to the gym. <laughs> If he... <laughs> he yeah, we've been a lot different, you know? he, um, And we kind of, it was, it kind of came alive when we got there, because um, I remember talking to Paul, the director, and not really knowing what the character was, and he said, it's fine, but it's going to be a lot of improvisation. And, and we got there, and, and the girls and myself were just starting sort of, you know, improvising, and this character kind of took off, and he's completely wacky, and you know, needs to be rescued most of the time and probably does more harm than good and, you know, doesn't even know how to answer the phone and, you know, it's just hoping to get some free rent. He's, he's hoping that comes with the job, which, which it kind of does. But Chris, uh, would you say... <laughs> first of all, would you say that, that, that maybe Thor is, is the greatest performance you've ever given and that Kevin is much closer than him? Yes. <laughs> much more me. And, uh, <laughs> 
I can't wait to see Ghostbusters. You can't wait to see Ghostbusters. I'm, I need to. So when, when you guys first met, did you get along like right away or did it take some time? <laughs> we, we got along. We, um, I think it was at Ken's house, we were at Ken Brown's house. Ken flew myself, uh, Natalie Portman, Tom, uh, the writer, yeah. all out to his house in uh, in London. And we all had this sort of three, four day sort of introduction and, and you know, hang out of the script. And, uh, and me and Tom, you know, we just sort of instantly kind of got along and we're like, wow, isn't this crazy? Because we were both at the very early stage of the beginning of our career. And huge fans of the, 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 you know the, these comics and the story and what it could be and talking about all sorts of possibilities. And every time we're at something like this, and Tom said to me 20 minutes ago, he said, "Can you believe that six years ago we first started you know, this 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 thing and these characters, and, and here we are?" So um, yeah, it was, it was awesome. I had this. I walked into to, to Ken Brown's office and um, I had the response. What many of you have when you see Chris for the first time, which is, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Huge. Um, and, then, uh, and then actually Natalie arrived, and we went off and... Um, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> and then we were dispatched to go and train together, and we went for a run, and, and uh, you lifted some logs, I think. And we were, uh, but it was really cool. It was just the coolest thing. Um, and somehow we both felt like we just, we had the best luck and it was going to be this great adventure and in that moment we were completely bonded by it. Um, and it has been the most incredible adventure, the whole thing. We're very lucky. You guys, not only as Thor and Loki, but in The Heart of the Sea and in Tori I love those movies. Um, but I'd to ask, what has Loki been up to since we last seen him, and what is a day in the life as King Loki? Uh, well, trains run on time for once. <laughs> Streets are clean. Um, taxis are low. Um, but essentially, the people are sad. <laughs> I'm using new posters everywhere um, of Loki's face. I can't explain. Honestly, I, I, I couldn't tell you. I, I could tell you, but I'm not going to. Um, you'll get to see it because you'll get to see it in November 2017. Hey, how you guys doing? In Avengers 1, when Hulk is throwing around Loki, how did you do that scene? Did that hurt? <laughs> I my pride, my dignity, and my self-esteem. Um, it, you know, it was a very, very funny day at work because it was just me in the room. It wasn't Mark Ruffalo wasn't there. Um, but it was me and Josh Sweden, and the, uh, the art directors and the set decorators had dug out these trenches in, in the set. And so what I had to do was I had to essentially jump into these things. Um, <laughs> which felt like the most ridiculous thing I've ever done. Um, as if I was being hot smashed. Um, it was just the st stupidest thing. It, 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 it. Joss, Joss Sweden couldn't keep a straight face. Um, I couldn't keep a straight face. Um, yeah, so we kept ourselves entertained. But um, I'm glad to see what that does. You know what seemed like that's coming up? Do you want to try to sneak out of the set so you can, can watch him? Ridiculously jump from hole to hole. Just putting farm machines in each tramp <laughs> Uh, no, I was happy to have the day off. <laughs> you got this one, Tom? Or... Yeah, yeah Paul, yeah. Awesome. So, first, I just want to say, Chris, I'm really excited for Ghostbusters. Both you guys, all of you, make everything you guys have done. But, uh, Tom, I know you said you're possibly up for like 007 or something. So, if you were. <laughs> If you were to get that role, or even just a role that's similar to it, would you want Chris to be in? If so, what kind of villain do you think you'd be like? Something to take over the world like Loki, or more subtle and just kind of destroy you personally? <laughs> the 
happy hour. <laughs> I would, by the way, I'd be first in line to see Chris as a, as a villain or something. That'd be awesome. I do too. Um, I quite like the idea. I mean, it's, I think it's hilarious that he just wants to destroy me. <laughs> That's a real vendetta he's got playing. I don't know. What kind of villain would you like to play, bud? Like thinking how you about Dan and Skyfall and the game. You can't go and copy someone else. No, of course, yeah, we are an original work. Yeah, you might be like subtly copying Loki or something. I don't know, just one with no parameters and no rules and, you know, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, it's a, yeah, it's an interesting question. But all the results. I don't know the interesting yet. I would, it would be fun to do something contemporary with Chris. Yeah. I mean, um, it'd be nice to have the role reversal, you know, yeah, and yeah. then play the villain with the hero. Okay. Or like two anti heroes. <laughs> <laughs> we just talk, we just don't take any time. Hi, um, first off, Tom, I have to say you're probably like the best birthday present I could have ever gotten this year. And then, Chris, you are pretty much icing on the cake, so um, it's wonderful to have you guys here. Um, Tom, I know you're a big Doctor Who fan, and I know a lot of us go around with um, being the next Bond, but if you, in a perfect world, got to choose, would you rather be the next Doctor or the next Bond? Oh. <laughs> I missed the Doctor Who question. I'm going to tweet this response. <laughs> How do you pick, like... It's like, it's like asking Chris to choose between his favorite children. I don't know. Um, uh, what do you think? Stop both! Oh, 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 I can't say that. I don't know anything, so I'm not. Seven. See, I, I, um, uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't possibly say that. Um, because I don't know that I would ever be either of them. Um, Doctor. But they're both great characters, obviously. So. Doctor Hyde. Thank you. I recently just had the pleasure last month of having Mark Ruffalo as my college commencement speaker, and he gave a really great speech kind of helping to inspire us as young graduates and creatives. Um, and I was wondering what advice you guys would give to inspiring artists or actors or anyone that's, you know, just needs a little pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> Advice is always tricky, isn't it? It's, uh, you, you want something to well, I, I remember being in high school and um, having a different idea of what I wanted to do. And, wanted to, and that came from, I just wanted to do something that made me happy. You know, and I, I've watched a lot of people, uh, you know, in the employment that they didn't love and, and weren't inspired by. And, and um, I just, I don't want to do that, you know, I want to do something that that uh, takes me on all sorts of adventures. And so I thought, you know, I'm going to be an actor. And a lot of the sort of career advice I got from my teachers was, wow, that's ridiculous. <laughs> you know, uh, what's your backup plan? What's your thing? And, and I just never had one. I, had, I was sort of obsessed with this idea then. And, and I think you've got to truly love it because there is a lot of no's and a lot of doors being closed. Um, but if that's what kind of fulfills your soul and, and that's what keeps you inspired and active in life and moving forward and continually sort of searching and then I think um, go and chase it and do it and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Um, but, yeah, but yeah, as I said, just whatever makes you happy, I think. And really go, and go after it. I mean, go after it and chase it down. Don't take no for an answer. Bash your head through the brick wall and keep doing it. The, tr the great tragedy is that one day you would look back on your life and say, I wish I had. I wish I just tried it. I wish I tried this. Um, you know, I've said this before, but, but we, we all get one life, and it's a short one. And you and you have to spend it doing things that you love. Um, and, and the more you love what you do, the more you inspire those around you. The more you create an, an environment which is full of love and life and fun and and energy. Um, so go after it with every fiber of your being. How do you 
usually just we usually just laugh about it actually. About, I mean about being against each other. Yeah. I think with a great thing about it. You get along. Yeah. yeah. Because you're both kind of open to saying, what if we try this? And would it be fun if we did that? Or whatever. And then, you know, there's no sort of grudge held or animosity. It's just kind of a search for whatever the best scenario of that, that relationship or that scene is, you know. But it's fun. I, you, I, when I get ready to when I put the Loki costume on, it's like, I'm having a fun day. And it always feels like um, it's going to be fun. Especially working with this guy.
certainly couldn't have done what he did, even getting in line to do that. Yeah, well, 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 give him a round of applause. Let's give a round of applause. And actually, on that note, we're out of time already. Right. No! So we need to get you guys back to the floor. Thank you again sincerely for coming out. Business